Okay, for tonight, I'm going to introduce you to a couple websites. The other night I showed you, I think, a field piece and one on True Tech Tools. Tonight it was going to be based mostly on a little bit of instructions for our, uh, performing vacuums will be the main source of it. A really good source of learning more about using vacuum pumps, um, the science behind it, the physics behind it, uh, how to hook it up, and what different readings mean when using a micron meter. And one of the ways of learning is actually going into the manufacturer's websites on the tools and equipment and looking at their little videos on how to use their stuff and read about them. And they actually have good reading literatures for those of the geek guys. The geek guys will like to find the reading articles uh, on the literature on how to read or how to use and the purpose behind vacuum explain it a little better so this is Testo Testo is one of the world's leader manufacturers uh, German made product and uh, they have very good test equipment uh, so you go to Testo and here we're on vacuum gauges so I went to tools I went to vacuum gauges and they have a little video one little video here and you could keep on scrolling through and go over to their educational they have an area where they have more videos uh, here's you know more about evacuation and refrigeration so just go to this website and look and read about what the vacuum does with oil especially they talk about poe oil not too much about PAG oil but POE is even more hydroscopic. POE oil is what's used in all the electric compressors mostly. So it's really important to understand the problem with moisture and POE oil. How to remove it, how to prevent it uh, from getting in there in the first place. Uh, all I can say is that if you're in the automotive field and you want to know more about the equipment, the equipment you're exposed to in an automotive garage is real low level and you don't get too much education and most of the little training seminars and stuff are only a few hours long that's not all of it i always say if um, you want to be an hvac guy and you want to like heavy commercial or residential if you took an hvac course in school and college and uh, and you flunked out and you were an f student then you're good enough to become an automotive mechanic uh, the level of working an automotive an HVAC for air conditioning on a car or air conditioning in uh, commercial or industrial or anything like that is two two different levels. Uh, car mechanics are always considered the lowest end of the totem pole. Uh, they always consider you, um, if you're in an automotive field, to be somewhat lazy about getting an education. Uh, they're in both trades, but what it takes to work in the commercial side and uh, water chillers now remember on cars water chillers are already being used in cars now automotive has uh like the new bmws they're using a glycol water chilling system uh to a heat exchanger block right off the compressor so the compressor is going directly into a, within a few inches going directly into a heat exchanger that has a glycol heat exchanger with uh, expansion valve attached to it. And then it uses a electric water pump to circulate the glycol to the front of the car where the radiator normally would be or the condenser would be. They now have a glycol heat exchanger up there. So Testo is a very good source. Here's Field Piece was the one from the other day. Uh, for those of you who may have just bought the new S-Man 480V, uh, I know a couple of my subscribers have already bought this and was asking questions about it. Uh, if you got the Testo, well, I mean, if you got the Field Piece, going on the Field Piece website and scrolling through their different videos is one of your best sources, and they have some literature on it. Another one is uh, I went over True Tech Tools. So go to their website and look for their videos for how to do things in, in vacuum, uh, using pumps, using uh, just their, oh, a good one. Here's a good one. Airflow. This is what car guys, automotive technicians don't understand. 
your condenser airflow really messes up your gauge readings and pressures and temperatures if one of the fans if it's a dual fan system and one is not working or not working as good your readings on your gauges are false they'll throw they'll give you false readings so will your temperatures if you have a plugged cabin air filter just like in a furnace if you have a plug filter you get the exact same symptoms so if you study about because there's so little automotive training because it's considered like a low-end industry all the good training is for commercial HVAC and residential and stuff like that automotive gets very little so if you train yourself if you're an automotive guy and you want to know more uh, here's a good one so this is in true tech tools these were really good ones for airflow read the or go over they have articles you could read but they also made videos about airflow so dash airflow with your dash uh, airflow doors not opening all the way uh, dirty fan motors just with a little bit of buildup on the fan blades will reduce the airflow and give you false readings out under a dash that can make you uh, if you're one of those guys who like to use the cans and charge by pressures or temperatures, having a dirty air blower will give you false readings, will mean you can't fill it properly. And what readings you read will all be fake readings. Uh, same goes with dirty condensers. So these are some good uh, system capacity. So if you understand these concepts, and that's why these are good videos, you can apply everything here to a car. The only difference on a car is a lot of these are stationary and very fixed systems where they have one speed fan, one speed blower, one speed compressor. On a car nowadays, we have variable speed. They're like mini splits in the residential area. You have variable indoor and variable outdoor fans. You have variable um, compressor speeds cars are like that so they throw a little extra into uh, the operation here's Jim Bergman now if you really want to know something about vacuum look up Jim Bergman HVAC come down here to this is the one that, um, basically this is all his short videos put together in one long video whole presentation presentation of HVAC uh, uh, vacuum and evacuation watch this one video right here and this is what I would like to train um, in if I was going to do automotive school as an instructor the, everything he says in this video is what my dad taught me when I was 12 years old there's nothing new here this was always around and this is what my dad learned when he was young so this is stuff and procedures that's been used in laboratories uh, for evacuation and all the way back uh, even Jim Courier who is the inventor of um, our air conditioning or one of them um, the procedures for vacuum were known for over a hundred years in the automotive industry we have really bad schooling and not very much attention paid to detail and uh, a thorough job it's just like can you get a cold can you collect money does the customer leave and that must be mean it's good enough with today's cars you just can't do that so I highly recommend just put in in YouTube Jim Bergman HVAC and find this particular video for evacuation another good source is going to um, AccuTools go to the AccuTools website and there's a lot of information so here I'm under blogs and they have videos and they have articles to read and um, so go over these articles and watch some of these videos and you will have a better in-depth understanding of the importance of vacuum how to take a good vacuum and most importantly how to read and understand what you're seeing on your micron meter um, I grew up never knowing what a my micrometer not ever working without one because my very first time I touched vacuum was with a micrometer and that was at the age of 12 when my dad started me so how mechanics were taught by 29 I was taught by micrometers 
and I was shocked when I got into automotive in the commercial how little automotive mechanics were ever taught and how little they know especially you know you work with guys who are I was a kid you know only 20 years old 22 and I was working with guys 10 20 30 years more experienced than me and they knew nothing really about vacuum other than oh you pull 45 minutes and that's good enough well what if you didn't pull all the way you know your, your analog meter is not accurate at all and um but luckily back then we were working with r12 and mineral oil and it's very forgiving and especially some of the big old iron compressors so uh testo field piece true true tech tools uh jim bergman his videos if you really want to geek out for those of you who are really like to know everything look for articles by jim bergman look for articles um, by hvac school for school by text hvac school for text by text also has a podcast and that should be enough information to um, get you caught up somewhat on uh, the meaning of vacuum and how to do it correctly and after you shut off all your valving and you read your micron meter you know what it means that's good enough for tonight see you guys for those of you who want to know more go to these um, different websites and uh, it's a wealth of information see you guys